Hey, I'm Cody Moncrief, eighth grade math teacher, and today's lesson is going to be on linear inequalities. That's going to be a ninth grade topic. I'm an eighth grade teacher, so what I'm going to do is combine something we taught this year, which was linear functions, and what the students learned last year, which was inequalities. At the beginning of my lesson, you're going to see me give them background knowledge for those that have forgotten to make sure they remember about inequalities and I'm going to review also quickly about linear functions. We've done that a lot this year so they should be very familiar with that. You're going to see two assistants with me. Those are two students that are going to be that have already accelerated. I taught them about this topic and it was a good way to differentiate for this lesson. The second part of the lesson is going to be me uh, giving them a way to kind of be hands-on and what we do is put shaving cream on the desk and they get to get really messy with it and they like it because they get to kind of, you know, be tactile with their learning. So they show that on their desk and they really like it. In the end, what we do is we do a review activity of the lesson, kind of to summarize and assess to see if they learned. It's a good way to do formative assessment and that's going to be with a Kahoot. And it actually prints out and gives me data of exactly what question they answered and how they did so I can go back and pull anybody who kind of struggles at the end of the lesson. All right. How many people are ready for the end of the year? Yeah, me too. All right, but before that, we're going to talk about a ninth grade standard, all right? The good thing is you've already learned about all parts with it. How many people remember something about inequalities from seventh grade? All right, how many people kind of remember some things but forgot some things? All right, good, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna refresh your memory. Somebody wanna read the essential question for me? Dominique, go for it. How can I represent the solution to any linear inequalities on the point equation? All right, something stand out to you in what we wrote for our essential question. What you got? Linear. Linear. What do you know about linear? Uh, has a straight, like, line, straight line. You got something extra you're going to have? No, it goes to zero, zero. Does it have to go to zero, zero? What does a linear equation have? Constant rate of change, all right. It can be positive, all right. It sounds like you're confusing linear functions with what? Proportional relationships. Remember, proportional relationships have to be positive. The linear functions, they can be what? They can be negative too. All right, good. So one big idea of this that you didn't say is this. Solutions. We're going to focus on the solutions to these today. That's the big idea, the solutions, and how we show them, how we represent them. Last year, wait, first, my two teacher assistants over there, stand up. All right, they've already learned about this, okay, so they're going to help me today. Somebody want to start them off with a question about last year's topic? All right, and if you forget those, we wrote them down for you. All right, they're up here in case you forget them. Somebody want to tell me how they think about how to read the symbol? How do you know which symbol it is and how do you think about it? You Jordan. Read, you read left to right. All right, you read it left to right. So if I'm reading it left to right, I come to what? All right, you know it's less than, how do you know? What tells you? Because the outside point to the right and the number is proportional. All right, so let's, let's think about, remember I said solutions is the big idea we're going to do, correct? So think about this. X is equal to 3. All right, where's our, what's our solution to this? 3. three. It's only one number, which is three. That's how many solutions? One. All right. If we want to change that, though, and we said x is greater than three, how do we represent the solution, Sean? All right. All right. Why do you say an open circle? All right. It's not equal to what? Three. Anything else we need to do? Somebody else. What do you think? Yeah. 
All right, so she said the numbers it can be. So what she's thinking is for x, she's going to do what? How's she thinking about it? So she's thinking about what numbers can fit. So four and what else? What else? So on. So this right here, how many solutions can you put in here? Infinite. It keeps going. And we represent that by doing what? Drawing arrows. Some of you just draw an arrow. I like to do this and then draw the arrow. It kind of shades and sticks out, right? So we shaded this side to show the answers. Everybody got that so far? And once again, how do we know that this was open? All right, you said it doesn't have a line under it. Let's see if I did that. Let's go to another one. If I did that, I could have x is what? Greater than or equal to. Let's do less than or equal to, and get a, give me a number of this up here. Two, I heard two. So, starting with this, that equal sign means what? It can be that, which is what? Two. two. I can be two. How am I going to show that? I had an open circle last time. Close it. So I shade in the circle. And now what? To the left, because the answers, the solutions are less than. The reason I can do that is because my variable is where? Is in front. Because I'm thinking about what numbers can I plug in here to make this true, right? What solutions can I have? So this is a uh, seventh grade. How many people remember something that they had forgotten after we did this? Raise your hand. Perfect. Good. That's why we did it. How many people remembered everything that we just did? A couple of you? All right. Good. Now, what's the other thing that we're going to need? So we're taking seventh grade inequalities and we're going to put it with what? Eighth grade what? Yeah, linear equations. This is a linear function, right? Now, what's my parts? Uh, Somebody raise their hand and tell me. Priscilla, tell me a part of this. What's that? Negative 3. What does negative 3 represent? The y-intercept. Perfect. So this is my y-intercept. And that's going to be where I start to graph it, right? So I'm going to put a point where? Negative 3, negative three where? On the y-axis, good. So I have a point there, and now what do I do, JD? Number two is like the number two is your um, is your slope. So is my slope rate of, change. rate of change? So how do I find a new point from it? it you go up to over up two over one, and I and I keep doing that. So up two over one, and I keep doing that, and then that's my rise over run, correct? Now, this is a big question. We're talking about solutions, correct? What solutions are up here? The points on the line. These are my only solutions to this. And how do they get represented? By the line, but what else? As coordinates, good. So x and y. All right, we're good on this, right? So we're going to combine this idea with the other idea to create linear inequalities. You sound like you know both things, right? So it should be pretty good. This is just the start of it, but you got the idea. What did I change right here? What did you say, Ethan? The sign. The, the symbol. The, not the sign, it's the symbol. Yeah. So instead of having equals in here, I'm going to have what? All right, I have less than. Everything's going to be the same. This is still my what? Y-intercept. Nothing changed there. Don't you like it when things stay the same? Good. What is this going to be still? Still my slope, rate of change, which is still going to be up to over 1. Everything looks the same so far. What do you think is going to change? What you got, Sean? All right, this change. So let's go back to what we just did earlier. When we did this, right? What two ideas did we have to think about with inequalities? Somebody give me one. There are two things we had to think about. Mm 
What you got? Take a guess. Right, open or closed circle, perfect. We don't have an open or closed circle here, do we? What do we have here? We have a line. So we're going to have to have kind of like an open or closed line, okay? How do you think we're going to show that? Not? What you got? Mm, good. I, that's a good guess. A little different, though. What else? Dash marks. Dash marks, Dash marks are going to represent what? Open. open. It's going to be open. And we want this one to be what? Open. open. What does that mean for my solutions? Remember, we're bringing it back to solutions every time. So what does that mean for solutions? Father, what you think? All right. Will my, remember before my solutions were on the line, right? Will my solutions be on the line now? Why not? Because it's open, all right? That means this is not the solution. Why, where are my solutions then? Jane, what you think? Where do I have to have solutions? If they're not on the line, where do I have possibility to have solutions? What's that? Yeah, so somewhere else, right? Anywhere else on here, I can have solutions. It's actually going to be easy. It's either going to be one side or what? The other side. The other side. They're going to be at angles. So what the easiest part is, before, on my other examples, what variable did I start with? Well, I didn't start with Y on the other one. I started with X. And I compared everything to what? No, I compared it to X, remember? I said X was equal to 3. And then x is greater than, remember? Now, what are we comparing? Y. y. Now we're comparing y, so we're just going to look at the y axis. Y is what? So if y is less than, which side are we going to be? This top side or this bottom side? Bottom. bottom side. This is where they're less than. So we're going to do what? How are we going to, how are we going to represent it? We're going to shade it. Shade the whole thing. Because remember, in inequalities, how many answers do we have? Yeah. Dominique told us earlier, how many answers do we have in inequalities? Infinite. Infinite. That means all of these points over here are our what? Answers. Solutions. Answers, solutions. Good. And how will we represent them? Yeah, by shading, but also, what else can we do with them? Like point coordinates. Point. Yeah, points, coordinates. So any x and y value that's on this shaded part is a what? Solution. Is a solution. Good. We feeling good about this? Let's do one more. And then we're going to do an activity with shaving cream. Anybody nervous about that? A little bit? All right, don't. Well, don't do that now. <laughs> You need your eyes. All right. <laughs> so let's do this one. Who, who wants to lead me through? One of my assistants want to ask a question to get them started. What's the first thing you think they might want to do? What, if you're doing this, what, what question do you want to ask them to get them started? Okay. Um, what, um, ask them. Ask somebody. What does that All right. Priscilla, what you got? Greater than or equal to. Good. What is that going to mean then? All right, y is going to be greater than. Good. What else does that mean? What does it mean for my line? Closed. Okay. When we draw our line, what's the first thing we need to think of? Y intercept. Good. So we're going to put a point where? Eight. On 8. OK. What's the next thing we need to think about? What do you want to ask them? When we want to draw the line, what's the next thing we want to use? OK. What type of slope is it? Negative. negative. All right, good. If we have negative 4, what's 
what are we going to do? Go down, four. go down four and what? Over one. Over one. One, two, three, four, and over one. One, two, three, four, over one. Everybody got that? That's a terrible line, too. All right. So, thinking back right here, is this going to be a dashed line or a full line? Full line. Full line. Full line. Good. Are answers on this line? Yes. 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 All right. Now we need to do what? What's the last thing we need to do? Shade it in. We're thinking about our Y, right? Now, this one I made on purpose because it's only a little bit of your Y axis showing, right? That doesn't matter. You're still going to compare it. Greater than, which side is it going to be? The below side of your Y axis or the upper side? The upper side. This side, because 9, 10, it's increasing, just like on our number line before. Right? So we're going to shade this. Now, if you remember, last time we shaded this side, but it was which side? The bottom. the bottom. What made this now become, the right side become the upper side? All right, the negative slope. Give me a thumbs up, down, sideways, how you feel about doing this. All right, good. We're going to practice an activity. This is what I need you to do. If you have rings on, if you have a watch, you probably want to take it off. All right, if you have sleeves, you might want to pull them up. Let's see. This is what's going to happen. You're going to have a little bit of shaving cream put on your desk, okay? They're going to put a little bit of shaving cream and you're going to flatten it out across your desk to make like a canvas, okay? And make it, you smear it around. Don't put it down your armrest side though because then you'll get it all on your elbow and all that stuff and nobody will tell you and you walk around with it, all right? So, and in case anybody's got some ashy hands and you're worried about it, this has extra moisturizer in it so you should be good. <laughs> all right. Now, So this is your desk, you see? No coordinate plane. All we need to worry about are a couple things. One, we need to make sure we have the correct what? We're drawing a line still. What do we start out with though? Well, you don't have, you can't, you're not worried about the y intercept as much, why not? You don't have a coordinate plane. What do you need to make sure you have though? Slope. You have to have the correct slope. So if it's negative, you're going to draw just the negative slope line, okay? If it's positive, you're going to draw what? Positive. positive slope. There you go. That's all you're worried about. Everybody got that? Yeah. After that, you need to make sure you have what? The line. You need to worry about the line and what type of line is it? What type of line are you trying to draw? It depends on what it is. If it's, dot, uh, if it's dotted or dashed, then you do that. If it's a full line, just a straight line. Now, the shading. You're going to just have shaving cream there, so how are you going to shade the side with answers? You can, you can do anything you want. You can draw on it. You could put a symbol on it. I don't care if you make a star or a heart. All right, you could put your initials. You can just put a handprint. Don't slap it down, though, because you'll be done. Got it on you and everybody else, okay? All right. No slap cams either, nothing like that, all right? <laughs> so, everybody ready? Everybody understand what's going on? All right, let's go. All right, go ahead and spread it around and go ahead and make this one. You had the first one up here. Hey, I know it's fun, but you got to do the lesson part now. Spread it out and then get started. Hey, everybody look at me. Freeze. Once you spread it out, then what are you going to do? You need to actually draw it. I need to see a line down. I need to see the type of slope and what else? the type of line and shade it. Go ahead and get started. 
I don't see anybody's line yet. It's going to be messy. All right, good. I see some lines down. Don't, you don't have to try to make a coordinate plane with it. Just draw the type of line you need. Make sure it's that kind of angle. If you want to just do a cross, that's fine to represent your x and y axis. We got to be quicker, though. Some of y'all are going slow, trying to make it look too pretty. All right, walk around and check them and see if they're shading the side they should. I see some different answers, so if we got different answers, that means some people have it wrong. Make sure we shade. I don't have some shades down. Shade your side. All right, you got about 10 seconds left to pick a side to shade. I got some people stalling. All right. One of my assistants want to lead us through this one. Okay. So, what kind of line would this be? Negative. And would it be an open or closed? When she said open, what does that mean? All right, we had some full lines out there. Remember, what lets you know if it's going to be closed? Symbol. Which symbol? The underlying no. What let everybody? What lets you know if it's going to be closed? It's not the less than or greater than part. What's the underlying part mean? Uh, less equal, to equal to. All right. So if it's equal to, then it's going to be a closed line. All right. Continue. All right, good. Go ahead and create your canvas again. Spread it back around. Here, we'll get it. I got you. I got you, Kamir. It ain't that bad. <coughs> Quit moving before I pull one of these out. <coughs> All right. When we were doing the first one, it lets you know if it was open or closed. One of them, yeah, the symbol, but, all right, when we normally draw a line, is it open or closed? What kind of symbol do we have then? Equals. So does, so if this has equals, what's that mean? Exactly. All right, good. We have a lot of answers now. Some of you are taking too long with your answers. Some of y'all are perfectionists in here. Don't worry. But look, this is messy. You're not going to make it perfect. So just put it on there and let us see. All right, my other assistant want to come show us. Oh, my God. Jolene, quit smacking it. All right. Go ahead. I told you not to slap it down. Hey, hey if you touch it, you're going to get more. All right, go. Think, think top or bottom or upper or lower, all right? But yeah, you're right. I understand what you're saying when you say right or left, but think above or below that kind of stuff, or upper or lower, all right? We're going to do one or two more, and then we're going to play a Kahoot. Uh, yeah. Who wants to play a Kahoot? Can I keep my shaving cream? Uh, no. <laughs> 
Hey. We're not going to get to Kahoot if we can't get these couple in. So we need time. Remember, it's a shorter day today. That's right. All right, here we go. Hey, nobody tell anybody about this. Everybody do this one and shave this one. Don't say anything. Walk around and check them. What I tell you? Did I tell you yell out the answer? Did I? Ethan, did he, I mean, um, Julian, did he yell out the answer? All right, thank you. All right, here you go. Everybody look up here. Some of you are looking stuck. Some of you are shading. Some of you are not shading. Some of you have shaving cream everywhere. All right. First of all, we do have a positive slope. It's equal, so what's going to happen to our line? It's going to stay full. Should we shade it any side? No. Why not? Well, it still has infinite solutions, but they're all where? On the line. On the line. Do we have a side shaded? No. Why not? Because the line is equal to. All right, it's equal to. It doesn't have an inequality with it. Okay. Thumbs up, down. Give me the messy thumb. Give me your messy thumb. Up, down, or sideways? How do you feel about this? All right, we ready for Kahoot? Yeah. All right, so looking at this, we have a new feature in Kahoot. It's a team mode. And what we could do is have several of you on the same device, and y'all could team up and talk about it first. And it kind of gives a little delay before they start the question. So you know how the timer goes, and sometimes the timer's already going real fast before you even had a chance to look at it. This has like a little pause in it. You're going to do it by yourself, but we're going to do the team mode just to kind of see how it is. Try it out. I right, still have a couple questions. We're going to go fast on these. <laughs> All right, we need that last answer. Be with us. All right, you need to be quick. I right, we still have one. So hey, we need that answer. Oh my God. That's not dash. That's dash. Not dash. Dash. Good. Everybody but one, we're right there. And these are our winners. Yeah. Hey, listen, what I need. I need iPads up on the cart. Get your stuff. Go to Second Academic. And I need the five winners. Come see me.